Show of hands if you learned something new about coaching. Yeah, fantastic. And show of hands if you can see this as a path forward to you possibly to be able to help people. Yeah, fantastic. And show of hands if there was something for you as a personal development or a learning through that conversation. Yeah, really awesome. Fantastic. So we've got a student that we would love to introduce you to, to connect with them. And then we'll go on a break, of course. Uh, this person has, is tuning in from New Zealand. How cool is that? So we've got a student, in, she's in Auckland or somewhere in New Zealand, she'll know. Her name is Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Can you hear me? <laughs> Say hi to her. I can, loud and clear. Oh, hello. Can't see her there yet. Fantastic. So Wendy has a very inspiring journey she wants to share as well. She's been a student with us um, for a while. She's a coach. And she's writing a book. How cool is that? So we would love to hear from her journey. Can can Wendy hear me? Wendy, hello. Yeah, you just you just let me know where I can uh, jump in. Oh, fantastic! You can hear me. That's awesome. Tim, are we sorting yeah. that out? Fantastic. So we'll get our conversation started. Wendy, thank you so much for joining us, uh, being here this morning. And I know you've been waiting for a little while. I really want to say thank you to you for being here to share your story. How are you today? Thank you. Oh, I'm great. I I feel um so excited to be here. I've been um listening into your coaching session with Steve and uh Steve, I I just want to know and I just want to say to you, I was where you are right now, very uh afraid, uh not sure what I was getting myself into. But I also knew that there was something in me that needed to change. So I'm so excited to see where you're at because when I tell you where I've where I've come from, um, I never thought it was possible. And um, so whatever I share with you today and all of you in the room, I just hope it inspires you to be um, the best versions of you. Oh, because that's a beautiful message. Yeah, because <laughs> we're, we're, we're taught how to accomplish in life, you know, when we're at home and we're at school, but we're not, we're not taught how to be, how to be our, th our authentic self. And yeah. that is, it's, it means so much. It's, it's life changing. Really good. That's a really wonderful message. Somebody said, we love you from here. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's really good. Who else resonates with what Wendy just said? We're taught how to accomplish, and now it's about learning how to be us, fully us, which is fantastic. Yeah, really good. So, Wendy, thank you for that beautiful share to open up. I'd love to um, get the conversation started or, or go further by – we've never met before, by the way, so it's really nice to meet you as well. Um, I'd love to have you share with everyone here, where did your journey start? What was life like when you started your journey? Okay, so where I was, um, so I am 57. Um, my adult children were, I had one left to leave home. I've been the person who was um, always people pleasing. I was there for everybody. If anybody needed help, I'm the oldest child in a very strict religious household. So um, I was brought up to obey men and also to do what I was told and to take care of everybody else so what happens is that we equate we then grow up equating uh love to people pleasing mm. and we think that the only way we are going to get love or feel loved is to to please others because wow. unconsciously Unconsciously, we all humans, without even realizing it, we want to matter, mm. we want to belong, and we want to feel loved. Yeah, because so as a child, we learn that if we don't learn how to how to matter or belong, we feel like we're gonna die. So we do whatever we need to do as a child to fit in, to belong, to get approval so that we're going to be okay. Wow. But what happens is we grow up, we become adults, and we still think like that. Yeah. So we accept 
bad behavior or we do things that we don't really want to do because we don't know how to say no because it's all we know. So what can happen is that you can become very resentful and you find that, uh, well, I found I was taking care of everybody else, but whenever I needed like, somebody. Like when you started your personal development journey? Yes. Yep. Yeah. When I started my personal development journey, I realized that um, I was there for everybody else, but there was nobody there for me. And, I, and I've had a couple of um, tragedies in life. And um, and I'll get to that in a wee minute. But part of that tragedy too was that my um, I was emotionally stunted or shut down because because when I thought the people that appeared to love me the most weren't there for me when I needed them, it was like why? What's my why? So when I came to my first. Um, session like I, I linked on from New Zealand it was a it was a virtual thing um and they said what's your why and I I honestly says I just I just didn't know because I was I was serving everybody else but me but I knew I needed to do something different but I didn't know what it was yeah wow so um the thing is you only know what you know Okay, you only know what you know. So I use this illustration with the with my clients is that we've seen on the TV this big elephant, this big giant mother elephant tied to this little chain and pin and it's in the ground and you know that they're strong enough to pull it, right? They can get away, but they don't. Why don't they? Because when they were a little little baby elephant, they were tied to that pin with that ball and they did try they did try and what did they discover they couldn't get away so they've grown up into a big big elephant to think that this is how it is yeah wow. and that's how we are that's amazing i love that metaphor because it is a metaphor yeah. for life as well if you think about it it's like you know we just fall into this conditioning and yeah we, we, we keep living life like that. So I'm curious, as you started your journey, how did this help you with your personal development? And then also uh, you chose to become a coach as well, which I would love to yeah. also touch a little bit on. Yeah. So um, what happened was it was at my Fox training. So that was my first, and Joe Parne, uh was oh actually I should actually just before we get there. So okay, Fox, just, by the way, was, is the first intake training that she's talking about, the first three day training yeah, that you were okay. doing at all levels. So, it, so anyway, um I was listening and like this was my first time and one of the things that did make me curious was how to become uh in touch with your emotions because I knew that I was shut down, okay? But what I didn't realize was that it was gonna be so much bigger than that and so much bigger than that. And what I mean by that is um, when I talk about a tragedy, when I was um, 25 years of age, um, or prior to that, uh, when I was 17 years of age, I was going out with a, a boy who wasn't of my faith. And so my parents gave me an ultimatum to either break it off or leave home. There was no question. So I left home and I didn't know anybody, but um, my husband's uh, mother's friend who I ended up boarding with. But then after that, um, when I got married, they didn't come to my wedding. And when I was 25, I got pregnant and my first baby at five months of age died of heart failure. And wow, um, that, that was bad. horrific. Yeah. So I had no relationship with my parents because they didn't want anything to do with me. Um, and then when we did connect, we did start connecting. Uh, it was all that conditioning coming back like I was I was this adult but it was like 
to get their approval, I still had to behave like this little girl. And it was like, I'm not a little girl anymore. I don't have to. I don't have to get your permission to do stuff. I don't need your permission. So anyhow, what I wanted to, so I had actually shut down my emotions quite a lot because there was no one else that I knew how to deal with the death of a child. There was no, there was no support group. There was nothing. There was nothing. And so I felt like I was just emotionally stunted or numb. Wow. So I um, heard that I could be in touch with my emotions and I thought, that's what I want. So I went to my husband. <laughs> He's the thing. I went to my husband, who I love, uh, and I said to him, I've ne I had never actually done any other sort of, I'd, I'd never gone to university, all my money and things had always gone to um, uh, the children or the family. And this was the first thing that I wanted to do for me. Wow. So I went so to this my, was this only was, a few years ago though, is that right? Yep. Yep. When you this was only this. four. Yep. This was four years ago. Okay. Four years ago. So until, so tell me if I'm getting this right. So until, until that moment, almost 53, yep. you yep. had not asked, you had not really uh, done anything fully for yourself yet. Absolutely. Wow. That's and huge. I just want to get in. Yeah. I want to get in here right now and say to anybody right now, today is the only day you've got. You don't get tomorrow is not guaranteed. Oh, wow. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. I have got less summers ahead of me than behind me. So damn well make up your mind and figure out what you want. And I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, Good on her. Oh, I love it. Okay. T today this is, is so not the, good. Today is not the day for dicking around and going, I don't know. Okay. Because I'm <laughs> going to tell you. you why. I love it. Good on you. Good. Wendy, okay. I love it. And so, the, that, so your why was doing something for yourself. Yes. And yep. then as, as you did it, which is fantastic, as you did it, what was the journey like from there for you? Okay. I haven't, I, I, you, we're missing a critical piece here. This is okay, where it I'm gets fun it. again. Go for it. Wendy's got this. Go, okay. Wendy. Right. So it was going to cost $999 to enroll in the course, right? Yeah. It was the first step. Yeah. I I just said that I was raised to ask permission. The husband is the head of the house. I went to my husband and I said, I really want to do this course, but it's going to cost $999. And I knew that we didn't have all the money, but we could. I could put it on the credit card. I just, and he said to me, why do you want to do it? So I told him and he went, no, you're not doing it. And I says, why am I not doing it? He says, because you don't need it. He, he says, you're smart enough. And I says, this has got nothing to do with being smart. This is about something I need to explore for myself. This is something that I need to grow. I feel like I've taken care of the family. All the children are growing up. This is my time. This is my time to do something for me. Yeah. And he, he said to me, no, it's a waste of money. You don't need that shit. So anyway, I went away for about half an hour. And I tuned back into the online course and I thought, this is ridiculous. This is something I really want to do. This is something I have never asked for anything for me. Anyhow, Joe and Joe and Matt, who were hosting it, were going, oh, we've had another person sign up. Congratulations. Go and pop the wine. Go and celebrate. Right. Now, this is your chance, guys. Come and celebrate join up you this this is life-changing blah 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 and I was sitting there and I was sitting there and I was going I really want to I really want to but I've been told no and I thought bugger it I'm gonna do it so I got the credit card out and I joined up and then Matt and Joe are going oh we've got another person yes Wendy from New Zealand congratulations Wendy and look honestly I couldn't celebrate I had to have a lie down I was shaking I thought I was gonna throw <laughs> up because you're like, hide, hide behind the oh. dash. <laughs> like, Which Wendy? It's not so Wendy King. For that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, wow. yeah, so anyway, That's I an started. incredible started, journey. I love it. 
I love that mm. there was, you're listening to the part of you that wanted to do something amazing. And you know, Wendy, yeah. this oh. is, um, and I'm sure all of us will resonate with this. It's like so often we do things that are really wonderful for us. And until we do them and we experience them, there's always going to be a part of us that's going to question it. And then when you've got it, it's, you've got it. And that's, that's yeah. the beauty of the decision you made. Keep going. So how did it then yeah. go for you from there? What was the journey right. like for you? Okay. So anyway, I started doing my studying. I went to Fox and I tell you what, um, and this is in my book. So I'm going to tell you about my book at the end. Okay. okay. Cool. Um, She's writing a book. How good is that? Yeah. So I, at my Fox training, we had this session where we had to go into breakout rooms, right? Yeah. And um, anyway, this was, I was in a room with Michael. And what we, had, what we had to do was for two minutes, two minutes seems a long time, you had to stare into the other person's eyes <laughs> and not say anything, okay? And you had to do this, we had to, had to do this turnabout. And then we had to say to the person what we saw in their eyes. And I had, um, so I did this and I, I went first and I said to Michael what I saw and then it was his turn, he told me what he saw. And there was my first aha moment. I absolutely broke down and cried because it was the first time I had been seen for Wendy. Wow. I had been seen for Wendy. I wasn't a mum. I wasn't a daughter. I wasn't a wife. And he saw all these qualities in me and I burst into tears because I was only I only felt acceptable when I was doing all this the stuff for everybody. Mm. Um, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks um, because I didn't think I was lovable, and I thought I was only lovable if I was doing something for somebody. I didn't even know what it was to feel love. Uh, that was. That was the biggest moment. And Steve, when I was listening to you talk and we're worried about judgment and what people are going to think of us, and this is what happens when you when you do your studying with the Coaching Institute, you, you end up getting that inner confidence because it comes down to the point where you don't actually give a continental what people think anymore. Guess what? You don't because you funny. end up hanging... It. You end up hanging out with your right tribe and your right tribe are those people at TCI and your other friends that see you for you and they accept you for you. And you don't, you can drop the mask now. You can stop pretending. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't ever say the word if. And I was on another Which training word, session. If, if. <laughs> Did you say if? And... I-F-F, if, not the other F. Oh, New Zealand. No. Got, it, got it, got it. Keep going, keep going. And um, Sharon was running one of the courses and she was going to town with the fuckity fuckity book and had us who were right out of our comfort zones to yeah. do something different. Yeah. And we didn't die. We Guess didn't what? die. We weren't embarrassed. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. You're so good. So good. So then what happened? Um, you didn't die. You survived. Tell us about how you I lived survived. from there. Oh, I, I was just like. I'm free. Give her a hand. I'm She's free. been awesome. I'm free. So good. Um, so we have to, we have to get to the point where, um, as I said, we have, we, we don't know what's ahead of us. So what are you doing with your life? Um, where I am now is I have got, I've met some amazing people. Um, so I have been, by, through my coach. Uh, sorry, yeah. Wendy, can I just jump in for a sec? So, so you yeah, had your personal sure. journey. It's fantastic. You shared that. When did you start coaching or why did you start coaching? Cause you have an incredible oh, personal I... story and thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Where did coaching come okay. in for you? Oh, so when did I start coaching? Okay. So then. Right, must have been after my so after my fox training, I had to so I I had so many more aha moments after there yeah. that um I learned about boundaries. Yeah. Wow. wow. 
that was wow. I mean, and I thought, you know, the next step was if I wanted to become a coach, I had to actually go to the next level. So yeah. I signed up and went to the next level yeah. because already what I'd learned was so invaluable that, like, you know, you've here's the thing. Those thoughts in your head can get you into a lot of trouble. And they can tell, you can tell yourself stories that are absolutely not true. And you have to, you have to recognize that voice or those thoughts, they are not you. Okay. They are not you. They, you are the observer. So those mm. thoughts are like the backseat driver. You know, that annoying backseat driver that goes, hey, don't go there or drive this way or go, take this direction. Yeah, like and a part of you quiet. that we were talking about Yes, before. they're a part of you. They are not you. Okay? Yeah. That's a really they good They are look. not you. All right? Yeah. They are not you. So you have to stop listening to that backseat driver and put them in their place. Uh, put them so in their place. I just, he yes, take away, please. Yeah. 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 Put them so, in their place. So what were... So, so you did the Fox training. I'm, I'm trying to get to mm -hmm. the coaching part. So maybe guide us mm -hmm. there. Okay. So then I signed up for the next level to where I really, it wasn't, it wasn't, it went from like a personal development journey to right. I want to be a coach. And the nice. reason why I wanted to be a coach was because what I had just learned in like three months was just transformational for me that mm. um, I wanted to, I wanted to help people live. Good. You know, so, not exist. Okay, guys, what half the time we're running around like flipping headless chucks, pleasing everybody. <laughs> that was me as well. We, you know, yeah. life is passing us by. Life is passing us by. And we're going, you know, do you want to get to 60 and go, what happened? Yeah. You know, what happened? No, you've actually got to stop and say, what is it that I want? Yeah. What is it that I want? What is going to what is going to fulfill me? Because that was what was that was what was starting to happen to me is that I started having a voice. When I learned I could have boundaries, that meant I could say no. And that was like I never knew how to say no. You weren't allowed to say no. Okay. If somebody said do it, you did it. Okay. So it's learning that you do not need permission to be you. Wow. Did you hear that? You do did not you hear need that? permission. Give her a yes. Fantastic. You did not. That's amazing. Go you. So you Wendy, I'm going to ask this question. Permission. You do not need permission, and I love it. And you just steam forward, and you did your fox intake. So which was so, so just just to also share with you guys. So Wendy started the journey for personal development, which means she joined the practitioner, the green one there, and then yeah. she leveled up to the red one. Uh, mm -hmm. to become a coach so her decision was to do it for herself first which is the practitioner gives the access to a couple of trainings that are personal development like the fox intake and metadynamics training and then she wanted to be a coach so she leveled up to master coach which is fantastic so tell us about your coaching experience how did you feel when you actually help people coaching them oh wow so here's the thing is that um, we were taught, you know, if we felt a little bit nervous, uncomfortable, that we weren't ready to go there, there. You know, we were just told to start, you know, just start. And it's like, oh, yeah, but you have all these self-doubts and you don't know what to do. And I even <laughs> went to my manual and thought, oh, my goodness. Oh, you know, what can I do, you know? Um, and then I met up for lunch with a friend of mine. And I thought, uh, she's, she's, she says, well, what have you been doing? And I says, oh, I've been coaching. And she goes, what? As I said, been coaching. And I thought, oh my goodness, we're going to see if she's going, what are you going to do that for? Like I was waiting for, what are you doing that for? And I went, yeah, yeah, it's really amazing what you learn about yourself and what you learn about people and how they tick. And, and she goes, wow, oh. she says, tell me about that. So I started telling her about it. And then I said, you know what? I says, a lot of issues we have, a lot of issues we have in adulthood are from our childhood. And do you know what? We don't, we're not even aware of it. We go into adulthood, we look like an adult, we bait, we we talk like an adult, but actually there's this little child inside of us. We're wounded. Oh, so and she just went, she went. And her eyes started to well up. And I says, Are you okay? And she goes, Oh my God, Wendy. She says, 
I've always tried to figure out why I go to parties and I have a couple of drinks and I feel like I have to be the clown, the entertainer of the group. And I <laughs> says, what do you mean? And she says, because I was brought up in such a strict home that, and we weren't allowed to talk at the table. We weren't allowed to, we were, we weren't allowed to laugh at the table. We just had to sit at the table and um, eat. She says that I couldn't stand it. She says, I grew up with five sisters, so I was the rebellious one. So she says, I used to make, I used to fart and burp and spit my food out. And my mum used to get, you know, go crazy. I'd get sent to my room. But oh, she yeah. says it would make my sisters laugh. And she says, and it just broke the tension. She says, and wow. so when I go to parties, she says, that's how I behave. And she says, but guess what, Wendy? And I says, what? She says, I'm, I don't get invited to parties anymore. And I says, why don't you get some parties? And <laughs> Go her. Yeah. She says, because I act stupid. <laughs> and I says, would you like to change that? And she goes, yes. And I says, well, Great how question, about... Wendy. I says, Great question. I says, what would it mean to you? if you could go to a party and be you without having to pretend to be somebody else. And wow. she says, it would be amazing. And I says, okay, well, I says, if you're willing to, if you're willing to put the effort in, I'm willing to help you. But oh, I yeah. said, you've got, you've got to want this more than me. Okay. Um, because one of the things I learned from Fox training was that you can't want this more than your client. Yeah. Remy said they've got to be gagging for it. They've got to be gagging for it. You can't, nobody's going to change unless they really want to change. So good. So how did you then get about the coaching session, Wendy? Because you had just done Fox training. You had some resources, of course. You had learned how to do a coaching yes. session yes. at Fox. Yes. So you just did that? Yes. So I just went through, I, I started with like the first two or three questions to help me get going. Um, and then guess what? It just one of the one of the things I was doing in my for my own personal training was looking at all the different videos that we have on the system and the yeah. um, that that we get access to. And yeah, one so you of get them access was, to an online Moodle where there's a lot of training yeah, that you online, can do at your own yep, pace. Yep. Yeah. So on the online um, Moodle, there was this heading that or this video that caught my attention was the beginning of self-love and again was it was it talking also? about the beginning of self-love nice. the beginning of self-love and what happens to us you know we're born with all this i am this like we are born we're, we're happy we you know we're doing our thing we have to cry because that's our way of communicating to our parents our needs we need our nappy change we need fed whatever then we get to toddlerhood and then we're we're learning our, our boundaries. We're going, no, no. And then guess what happens? Don't you say no to me. I'll smack you. And then we're going, why, why, why? And it's like, just because, just because, okay? And then we get a bit older and then we're going, we're starting to see what we can get away with what we can't. And then we certainly, then we start learning out, learning, oh, if I do this, that's going to get my attention from mum. If I do that, that's going to get my attention from dad. Whether it's good or bad attention, we learn how to fit in to get the attention and love we need. Because right up to the age of eight, we only think and we feel. Our logical, our, our cortex has not developed. So right up until the age, we cannot think logically. We feel everything. So that means that everything and anything that happens to us at the, to the age of eight, we take it personally. We take it personally. It's yeah. our fault. We did it. We made them do it. So you helped so, your friend overcome that? Is that what happened yes, in the coaching? Yes. Yeah. And here's the thing. I'll cut nice. to the chase. because I'm. <laughs> um, so what happened was her stepfather unfortunately died. I had eight sessions with her. Eight sessions. Wow. Yeah. Was she like I a pro bono session. client, of course? Yes, yeah, she was a pro bono oh, client. Pro bono. And nice. she she keeps telling me now to this day, she goes, Wendy, you can't believe um, how much this has changed my life. Um, she is, her 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 um, stepfather died, who she was very close to. Her sisters were, some were overseas, some were um, 
in New Zealand, but they had to travel down to, to Invercargill, where only one of the sisters, I think she had five sisters altogether, were all meeting. And she said to the sisters, I want to speak at the funeral. And of course, the sisters were going, no, you can't, Maria, you can't, because all they could think of was Maria at the dinner table, burping and farting and telling jokes and thinking, we're not having her stand up in front of an audience and say something about our stepfather because she'll end up just turning it into a, a mockery. And she says, um, I've been having coaching lessons and I have I have grown and I've grown into an adult. And if she said to one of her sisters, I would actually like to read to you what it is I want to say. And if you're okay wow. with it, you can be able to convince yeah. the other sisters that it's okay for me to talk. Good so she her. did that. That's amazing. So anyway, um, she did that and she spoke at her stepfather's funeral. And that is huge. her sisters, her st sisters, and she says, Wendy, I didn't say one joke. She says, and when I got off the stage, she says, my sisters hugged me and said it was the most beautiful thing they've ever heard. And of course, her cousins were there and they couldn't believe it was the same person. And they said it was the most heart touching thing they'd ever heard. And that they cannot believe she was the same person standing up there giving that eulogy. How incredible is that? They were just sort That's of sitting funny. there going what is she gonna say like wow. because they knew she was the the clown like she, um and it just never yeah it just never happened so Wendy can I just acknowledge so, you for the amazing work that you're doing with people and I am absolutely I would say like I, I'm in awe of how well you've executed what you're learning so, and that was straight out of Fox. I can only imagine, yeah. you know, you've done eight sessions with her, changed her life, and then you've been coaching people now as well. So I really yeah. want to acknowledge you for yeah. you actually showing up for people. Can I ask, what is life like now? Do, do you have coaching clients? Do you have a coaching business? I know you're writing a book. Maybe bring us to that yeah. as well. Well, um, six, six weeks ago, I gave up my full-time job. I have Good got... on you. Give her a hand. Well done. I have got a waiting list for clients. Nice. A waiting list. Um, Give it a hand. Well done. Um, okay. I've got my first proof of my book. Go ahead. Why me? I love it. Yeah. Really good. Okay. This is this is um I'll tell you about this book if I can for just two minutes. So my Andrew? book, where, where I was at the beginning good? of... Great, go for it. When I first started my journey, there was... Um, I could not say my daughter's name without crying. I could not hear my daughter's song that played at a funeral without crying. Um, I couldn't even talk to people, even my family, about her because it was like, that's happened a long time ago, dear. Move on, move on, okay? Um, oh. I have now been able to write my book... Um, it's in two parts. Part one is my story about um, my journey of, of having my baby and what happened and why she died. The second part is, is a combination of what I've learned with TCI. It's a combination of, of all the other extra resources we're encouraged to read. I have, um, so it's about what happens to the brain and the body, our nervous system. Um, how our friends can behave in a situation like this, what men, what happens to men in a situation like this, usually what, you know, how they're told to be um, about, and they're emotionally shut down, but equally they want to be acknowledged that they're suffering too, how we help them. Wow. Uh, that our self-worth, our self-worth is our job. And if we do not, uh, this is one thing I want to say to the whole group, you are responsible for you. You, if you, if you do not look after you, it is self-abandonment. You cannot look after everybody else and not look after your needs. You must look after your needs. Good on you. That's so powerful. Incredible. Give her a hand. So powerful.
Wendy, your book sounds amazing as well. And the fact that you have a waiting list of clients and you've quit your full-time job is just such a wonderful testament to how well you've actually followed the system and you've you've actually done the journey. You've showed up, you've done the work, which is a really important part of the journey as well. Do you guys get that? Like being a dynamo. Who gets that? That's really valuable. Like taking the action. So Wendy, thank you so much. I, I'm sure we could continue chatting and you're such a wonderful, lo lovely person to chat to as well. Who enjoyed that conversation? That was epic. So Wendy, I really want to say thank you. And we're, we're way over time, by the way, but that was a fantastic conversation. And uh, thank you for being part of our community and our school and taking everything that you're learning and going out there and making a difference with it. Because that's what's at the heart of the entire mission that we have to help you as an individual. And then you go out there and you make a difference in the world, Wendy. So thank you so much. Give it a huge round of applause. Yeah, that was fantastic. Thank you.